Today's video was made possible thanks to the wonderful people at Mad About Horror. Check them out on the web at www.madabouthorror.co.uk. What's your favorite scary movie? Hey guys, me host Super Sorrel. Thank you very much for tuning in. Look what I got. This is the London After Midnight figure by NECA. I've been dying to get my hands on this one. This is a lost silent movie from back in the 1920s. This is by uh, the Lon Chaney action figure of Professor Burke, part of the Ultimate series by NECA. And yes, this film is lost to time itself. The last copies were burned in a big fire at a studio, uh, which apparently burned the only surviving copy. So we've got no physical kind of version of this film left. All we have is the visions of what Lon Chaney look, looked like as the character, which is really, really cool. And it's become a cult classic because of that little fact. But, but let's jump in, guys, and take a closer look at this action figure. It's one of the, of the figures that I've been wanting for a while. Technically, it's not classed as a Universal Monsters figure, but it is, it's on the same wavelength for me as, like, the Nosferatu. It kind of, it's not actually... A part of the Universal Monsters, but it fits in with them, if that makes sense. I think that's why um, NECA made this figure, because obviously it fits in with that line very well, and they, and they already had the license for the Lon, for Lon Chaney, so they probably got um, you know, be, were able to make other figures of other characters he's played. But guys, without further ado, let, let's jump in and take a closer look at this awesome figure. Alright guys, so here is the figure out of the box. Like I say, it looks absolutely stunning. This is such a nice figure. Um, Necker have done a great job with this one. Well, let me just amend the camera angle there so I can pull him forward. Uh, the face sculpt on this one is real nice. We do get three face por por portraits on this one. This is the face I use for display. But you, we also do have two more as well. We have this one. And this one. Obviously, with it being Lon Chaney, not, not overly different from the ones we got from Phantom. So you can see the resemblance, which is quite cool. Very cool. And I do have the uh, Lon Chaney Phantom figure as well here. Just thought I'd bring him along. And so we, could, we, we can try and do some head swappies and stuff like that, see if they're, they're comparable. I assumed... Oh, he's fallen over. I assumed... This was gonna be the same body, uh, but it's not. Um, or the same figure is what I mean. I thought they were gonna be very similar, because obviously with it being Phantom, it's a tuxedo. I assume there was gonna be a lot of crossover here, but it, there's not. They really have really changed this up. And the, the top hat on this one is really nice. I love this top hat. To be fair, if you weren't uh, like au fait with the film, you could probably get away with using this as like a Jack the Ripper for your collection almost, because it's that kind of Victorian style look and that's how you know they always portray Jack the Ripper to look so I mean you could very easily pass it off as that as well um but yeah this the the figure is very nice he comes with two head sculpts like I say uh, you've got the two hands that come with him as standard which are just um open palm you know pointy fingery hands but we do also get an just a plain palm open palm style hand we do also get a grabby hand for items and then we get another kind of fingery, pointery, yeah. <laughs> <don't> know, yeah. <laughs> Thing. <laughs> but uh, he does come with his uh, lantern as well, which is very nice. This is a very nice effect, uh, a very nice piece. Shame it's not a lighter one, it's a standard one, but still very cool. Again, I wish they would put lights in these, because I know they can do it, because they do, they do it for the pumpkins, when they put little lights in the pumpkins. So it'd be very cool if they made these light up. Either way, it does look very cool when you put this in his hand as well. Um, now he comes with this uh, hard cloth, sorry, hard cloak piece, which does just pull off um, to reveal the, the figure underneath, which again is very nice. But they do did also give us um, another little piece here, another little cloak cloth piece, which is more like your um, tuxedo kind of cloak, which again just slots under his hair like so. Yeah wraps around nicely so you can wrap that around him just like you would the previous cloak and you've got the cloth look rather than the plastic look i do like the cloth um, and if you lift that up here like that then you can oh, 
we get this just right. We pull it in a little bit. Yeah, we go. And then you can put the lantern in his hand. It's just a little bit nicer looking with the cloth, I think, rather than the plastic. But again, that's just my opinion. Some people do prefer the hard plastic stuff. Some people prefer the cloth. Personally, on this one, I like this cloth piece. Pulling that off and looking at the other piece as well, because they did give us a giant bat-style cloaky thing. Um, <laughs> this, I'm not, I'm not a massive fan of this. I don't think I'll ever use it, but basically you put this around his wrist and his neck, and it puts, it makes like a bat effect. There you go. <laughs> Again, I'm not a massive fan of this piece, but it is like the bat cloak piece. Oh, jeez. I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> But it's there for those that want it. So looking at articulation on this, it is the standard NECA style articulation that we've become accustomed to. The head is on a ball joint. You can make him look up and down, left and right and all that good stuff. Plenty of movement in the neck there, which is great. His arms lift out to the side and rotate. There is a single hinge elbow there that also rotates. And the hands are on nice little hinge joints. Uh, there is flaky flaky that always is on NECA, but it's just a bit of paint flake. Uh, that comes off just with wear and stuff like that. Um, abdomen, I can't tell because we've got this big cloaky beast, but it will be under there, I'm guessing, but maybe not. Uh, don't know, it's going to be useless to us because of all the plastic anyway. Legs lift out to the side as well as forwards, backwards, and there's a single hinged knee that also has rotation. And feet are on rocker and pivot. Great little, um, great little figure to be honest. And it does have display pick holes, should you wish to use a display base. But now with the basic sort of stuff out the way, I can get on to having some fun with this figure. So, like I say, I do have the other Lon Chaney figure in the range, right here. And uh, I'm interested to see if these are compatible for Hedy Swap Swaps. Because if we swap over the hands and the heads, then it should match. Because I know these hands are a little bit paler, so it'd look weird having the pale face on the body with the thingy hands. But yeah, you can kind of mess with it. So let's, because obviously it's the same thing, I, want, I, want, I just want to play around, so let's see if these heads are compatible. So if I give the little poppy pop here, because I do like this head, this head is my favourite of all the sculpts. And if we pop off the front of the opera head, that one's always a pain. Ah, this might be fun because of the cloak. We might have to remove the cloak. Oh, he's, I forgot he's round his arms, isn't it? Oh, this is going to be a pain. I'm not sure if we can put this on. Ugh. You can kind of sit it on there. You would have to remove the proper full-on cloak. But to be fair, that's that's pretty much on. Um, so yeah, it is, you can do a little heady swap swap. Let's see if this one swaps onto this one, though. Because this is the real test. Or is it a different ball joint? Ugh. Oh, no, it does pop. It does click into place. It doesn't look too bad, to be honest. That's a very posh Phantom of the Opera. He's in a, this is a posher outfit for Phantom. He looks odd in that costume, he really does. But I, it was more of this I wanted to see, to see if this worked, and it does. So we do have alternate costumes for him, which is nice. Also, one thing to check out as well, let's put the hat on there as well. Ah, look at that. I might end up putting this cloth piece hmm, on this body. That might look really cool. Then again, he's got this big cloak coat, whereas this guy doesn't. So, yeah, no, this looks all right. I do actually like that. I'm not going to lie, I think that's really cool. That may be how I display him now. <laughs> ah, yeah, like I say, not mad at that. Not mad at that at all. Oh no, I better put it back before before people go mad in the comments. So guys, what are your thoughts on this Lon Chaney London After Midnight action figure? Is it one that you'll get for your collection? Let me know in the comments below. Guys, thank you very much for watching. As always, I'm your host Super Sorrel, and I'll see you in the next video. But until then, may the toys be with you. Bye! I'll be back. I always come back.